My name is James Wilson and the company is We Love Sleep and we sell products that help you sleep better. Um, I work for my mum and dad and uh, my grandpa was actually the, the, the first person in our family who set up his own business and he, he was a, a timber merchant who became a bed manufacturer who my dad, because he was my mum's dad, my dad went to work for him um, and it was a family business that 28 members of the family were working for. It, my grandpa sold it because everyone in the family couldn't agree who was going to take over the business and then my dad started working for himself with my mum. We imported beds from places like Brazil and China and sold them to retailers, so people like Next and then little retailers around the country. And I used to go into the, the shop selling and I thought, I can do this better. So it was a, a case of thinking I can, I can do something better. Um, so I, we, I started off working part time for mum and dad and then working on Wheel of Sleep um, a couple of days a week. Um, and and what, we want, what I wanted to do was, bed shops sold mattresses based on, basically here's a product, we're going to tell you something about it. We'll pretend it was used to be this much. It was very much like selling used cars. And I want to make it not about a mattress. I want to make it about sleep. So let's start with some sleep problems, common ones like snoring or insomnia or allergies. And then let's sell products that actually solve the problem. So make it a, a, bit, a, bit, more of a, a bit more of a process that is open and transparent and try and sell things that actually work rather than things that are marketed well, which is, which is often what happens in our industry. Um, I think every day you learn something new, so things that were very difficult to start off with, even from the start, we were an online business only to start off with, even just populating the website when I was working part time was a massive challenge. Deciding which web designers to use was a massive challenge originally, things like that, you know, and, and then we moved on to trying to find some funding to grow, that was a massive challenge. Um, just opening a showroom, which we, which we sat in at the moment, that was a massive challenge. So I think. There's been lots and lots of massive challenges, but I think that, you know, as an entrepreneur, I've, I, you're very resilient, and you do sort of fight through those challenges and, 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 and get to where you want to be. Um, I think entrepreneurs are who they are, so you use whatever your personality is. I didn't used to think I was an entrepreneur. I didn't, I, well, I'm not a Alan Sugar-esque, let's stand on everyone, or someone on Dragon's Den, often the people on there, they, they give an impression of entrepreneurs that, I don't think it's particularly truthful. I think as long as you are who you are, and and you you sort of work, use your your advantages to to do well and realize what you're not good at and get other people to do those kind of things, I think you're normally successful. So yeah, I think they're made. You know, although my grandpa was one and my dad was one, I think it's just that I had an example that was set to me. Now I still went and came out of university. I still went and worked for a big multinational company. Even with that kind of um, p people to look up to, I still I still sort of took the t more traditional route before actually finding something I was passionate about. And I think entrepreneurs are passionate and I think that's the, that's the most important thing. Um, I think the passion does drive me day to day. Like I really, really love what I do. We get to help people. You know, we have, we have, um, we have people, people who, who are really happy customers, but also the challenges, you know, when things go wrong, I think an entrepreneur loves sorting out problems when things go wrong. So although, although you might throw your hands up in the air and think, oh no, not again. It is actually at the end of the day the buzz is from solving that solving that problem. So the times we talked about, like getting finance, moving into here, all those things. When you look back on it, you think I actually enjoy. I actually enjoy the process. It's when I'm doing the day to day stuff that I probably find it harder to motivate myself because I, I do love the challenge of, of running my own business. As a retail business, it's quite important. You know, we we have a lot of overheads. Um, and we have, um, we, we, although we, we, we are lucky that we often take our payment up front and get quite good terms from our suppliers, you know, it is, it is difficult and some of my challenges have been not managing my cash flow properly because you, you know, you can have a good month in retail and you have a bad month and you're paying for the, the sort of the products that you sold in the, the good month. So it is, it is always a challenge. Um, we've got, we've got through it, but at times it's been by the skin of our teeth, definitely. To be honest with you, they're not very important at all. Um, we've, we, we have gone through a couple of accountants, we're just starting on with another one, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that they, they might be the ones who, who kind of we have a good relationship with. I often find accountants are someone you see at the end of the year who give you a set of books and then try and charge you twice as much as they did last year for them. So, I, I, yeah, in theory, this should be very important, and um, you know, especially one that can influence you with management accounts and things like that, but to us, they're probably not being that important.
I think it'd be more commercial and also you know, the accountants do need to be more commercial and also they need to have a bit of enthusiasm for your business. You know, when we're, well, the last account we, we had previously to the one we've got now, they just, they just didn't really care what we did. They just wanted to do the accounts. I think they shipped them out to India and got someone to do them. We don't want to work with a company like that. We want to work with someone who's sort of based locally to us. Is is in our is in our local community and actually has a has a passion for what they do and can understand why we've got a passion for what we do. I think I think it is a really really massive importance as a retail shop. It's really important that a lot of people I've met networking are customers and a lot of people I've met networking uh, give word of mouth. Um, but it's also just sharing experiences and saying to people, you know, I've got this problem at the moment. How can you how can you help me or what, what have you? done it or have you got an opinion on it and I think you use your networks your networks opinions to actually help help form help form your opinion. Obviously I want to take over the world. I want to be a wheel of sleep in every country in the world. But I think yeah we want you know we want to grow. We want to have other wheel of sleep set places where you can go and try the products. Online is going to be very important to us because that's what we were originally. We were an online retailer. We still are an online retailer and we, we're just about to upgrade our website and with that we it allows us to to give a stronger sort of marketing message. We're doing things like 30 day money back guarantees and other products um, and and also get lots and lots of information about sleep out to people and, and create like a hub of, of sleep advice alongside selling selling the products. So www.wheelofsleep.co.uk